Do you like playing with balls? No, I'm not talking about footballs. I mean your balls. Our friends at Manscaped, the global leaders in below-the-waist grooming, want you to shave your pubes with the Tom Brady of ball trimmers, the brand-new Lawnmower 4.0, only the GOAT technology for the greatest balls of all time. When you're going towards the end zone, make sure you use the right tools for the job and choose Manscaped. Two million men worldwide trust them, so join the movement with our exclusive offer by using code DTR at manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping. Stafford, under pressure, and a tuck it away. He's in! Darryl Henderson, he's off and running! As was oh. touchdown! Cooper Cup just went up and took it away. Van Jefferson for the touchdown! Aaron Donald smothers him. Jalen Ramsey put the pop on Of the night. All right, guys, welcome back to Downtown Rams. As always, I'm your host, Alexis Kraft. Join here with my co host, Jake Ellenbogen. And today we have a very special guest. Uh, we are joined today by Dave Kluge of Football Guys, Fantasy Pros, and the Launchpad. Uh, but before we welcome Dave on the show, I just want to remind you all that the NFL season is here. You need a sports book with integrity and longevity like BetUS. You may already know this, but BetUS has been pioneers in the sportsbook industry for almost three decades, thriving and paying their loyal customer base. That is BETUS.com, and they have loads of bonuses. Join now or call 800 69 BETUS. That's 800 My Bet US. You receive a 125% sign up bonus by using bonus code RAMS125. They have re up and referral bonuses also. BetUS is known as America's favorite sports book for a lot of reasons. BetUS has all your NFL games with team and player props and loads of futures. You can bet UFC matches, props, PGA golf, round matchups, and live betting on most sports as well. The online casino has hundreds of games, and the race book has all your horse tracks. They have every bet type imaginable, and the sharp BetUS mobile platform is easy with full betting options. Follow my lead and get your phone, online, and social sports betting partner with integrity and longevity like I did. Bet US. You bet, you win, you get paid. Bet US. All right. So, (laughs) welcome, Dave, to the show. Uh, Thank you for coming here today to help us preview the Bears versus Rams game this upcoming Sunday night. Yeah, how exciting. We finally have football after a long, long offseason. Alexis, I am thrilled uh, to have the opportunity to do a show with you. Jacob and I, we did one a while back, and um, I I believe we eclipsed the two-hour mark. We had so much fun that we couldn't (laughs) stop talking. So, uh, you know, excited to hop on with both of you guys today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Dave, it's uh, it's our pleasure. Um, I told you, uh, you know, I'd get you on the Downtown Rams podcast as soon as we finished up the uh, the JE live show. So that was that was a blast. So glad to have you here. Know you're a Bears fan. Uh, we won't gang up on you or anything like that. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, before we get into our you know roundtable questions and all of that that we're going to go over, um, Alexis is going to read the injury report for the Rams and Bears. Yes. So as of today, uh, this is the current injury report for both teams. Obviously, this can change before Sunday night, but just here's what we're working with right now uh, for the Rams. So Ashawn Robinson uh, did not practice today uh, due to a knee injury, but he is expected to play on Sunday night. Uh, ben Skoranek has a forearm in- uh, injury, and he is limited. Uh, Terrell Lewis did not practice today. Uh as well as Andrew Whitworth, but both of those are just being called rest days. As far as the Bears go, uh, defensive tackle Eddie Goldman did not practice today with a knee and ankle injury. Uh, Tight end Jimmy Graham had a rest day and did not practice. Uh, I will get this last name wrong, uh, (laughs) but linebacker Joel Iagunwe was limited today with a shoulder injury. Uh, Khalil Mack, linebacker, was limited today with a groin injury. Wide receiver Darnell Mooney was limited today with a back injury. And outside linebacker Robert Quinn was limited today with a back injury. So uh, that's what both teams are working with injury-wise. It looks like the Bears potentially have, you know, slightly more of an issue there. 
uh, than the Rams do, but also both teams have guys out simply just due to rest, which is nothing to be concerned about. Yeah, you know, um, that is, of course, the the name of the game. And I mean, I guess, you know, the Rams and Bears have to feel good that they're not the Ravens right now, you know, with the, you know, recent injury to, to Gus Edwards and Marcus Peters. But we're going to we're going to get into it. Um, we'll start off. It'll go Dave, Alexis, and then uh, me. I'll wrap that up. Uh, thoughts on both teams heading into week one and thoughts on where they might end up at the end of the year. Well, it is certainly frustrating right now being a Bears fan heading into week one, knowing that we're missing what I believe is the most integral part of this offense, which is our first round pick, our future franchise quarterback, hopefully, uh, Justin Fields. So I understand it. You know, they made a commitment to Andy Dalton this offseason that Andy Dalton was going to get first knock at the starting job. But I don't know who Matt Nagy is trying to fool at this point. Like, Justin Fields has played better in the preseason. He has showed up in camp every single day. He's wowing the media, uh, the rest of the staff, the fans. Everybody wants to see Justin Fields. But for whatever reason, he feels obligated to put Andy Dalton out there. So it's it's pretty frustrating as a Bears fan, knowing that you, know, you might leave some wins on the table in what's going to be a really, really tight NFC North just because you feel like you have to do the right thing by rolling out the veteran. So um, week one, it's, you know, obviously I'm excited. It's week one of football. I haven't gotten to watch my Bears play in quite some time. So I'm excited, but I am tempering the expectations because of Dalton Overfields. Um, I expect this game to be an absolute blowout. You know, I, I, you guys are both big Rams fans, and, and I'm sure you'll be uh, rubbing it in in just a few days. But <laughs> really, the Rams are just a better team front to bottom. And the biggest difference is Matt Stafford is a much, much, much better quarterback than Andy Dalton is. Um, as for the season, I actually have the Bears making the playoffs, which might be a little bit spicy, but this team has made the playoffs two of the last three years with Mitch Trubisky as their quarterback. I think they're going to be just fine with either Dalton or Justin Fields. Um, I've got this team locked in for 10 wins. So I'll start with the Bears first. Um, I have a much different prediction for the Bears, uh, unfortunately. And Dave, I don't know if you know this, but I actually have a very soft spot in my heart for the Rams, or excuse me, for the Bears, because I live in Chicago. Uh, so I want to see the Bears do well. I absolutely love Justin Fields, but I just don't see this being the Bears year because of the NFC North, which I think is going to be very competitive. So uh, I don't have the Bears making the playoff, unfortunately. As far as uh, the Rams season prediction goes, um, everyone knows that I'm very, very high on the Rams, uh, more than I have been in the past, which is not a biased take, uh, you know, obviously because I'm a Rams fan, but just I think they have the most talented roster that they've had in a long time. So I think when you start looking at the top three, four, five teams to make the Super Bowl this year, I think in the NFC that the Rams are definitely up there. I think the Rams are going to do very well this season. Going into week one against the Bears, uh, I agree with Dave. I think it is going to be a blowout by the Rams. Um, I think that, uh, you know, this is going to be an opportunity for the Rams to maybe make some of those flashy plays that they might not be able to make in other games. And, you know, to me, honestly, it'll be a disappointment to me for the Rams if it's not a blowout because I think they have a lot of opportunity. They're at home. It's Sunday night football. Um, and, you know, we'll see. I, I think closer games are always more entertaining, personally, but um, I do expect that the Rams are going to easily win this game. Yeah, I got to say, I think it's kind of funny. We're, all three of us are a little different. Um, Dave has the Bears making the playoffs. Alexis has the Bears missing the playoffs, but because of the division. I actually think that the Lions are going to come in second, but tie with the Bears at 6-11. and 11. So I don't actually love the division. I think the Vikings are going to be absolutely terrible, to be honest with you. Um, so I'm not actually high on the division, but I do have the Bears missing the playoffs. Um, I do think if they play Justin Fields, they they have a shot even in this game. I mean, I, I kept saying it, you know, throughout the week on all sorts of, you know, shows that I went on. I said, we know, and Dave came in and basically made it obvious, we know Andy Dalton is not going to beat the Rams. We know that. But we do not know if Justin Fields could. And so that's my thing is kind of like, you know, I understand the promise and all of that, but don't you think the Seattle Seahawks promised Matt Flynn years ago that when he signed that big contract, yeah, you're going to be our guy. And then they went out and they got Russell Wilson in the third round. And he, he had a great preseason and you know the rest was history. It's a little different because you're talking about fields as a first rounder. And so to me, I just I'm honestly 
I'm you, you guys probably know me if you follow me on Twitter, then you know I'm a baptism by fire guy when it comes to you know rookie quarterbacks. I can't ever imagine picking one the first round and sitting them, but you know I, I think that really does limit the Bears. Um, if Fields plays you know down the road, I think that they'll start to pick up some wins, but that's really why I have them around six and eleven. As far as the Rams, you guys already know I have them winning the Super Bowl and beating the Chargers. Um, I'm sticking by that. I think they are one of the absolute best teams in the league and uh, adding Matthew Stafford to a team that made the divisional round last year and gave, you know, Packers uh, a little bit of a a tug of war there, you know, for a bit um, on the road, no less with Jared Goff. I think adding Matthew Stafford to that team and just, you know, the fact that, you know, now you have, you know, Deshaun Jackson who could stretch the field and, you know, just the the different things that they've been able to do in as far as acquiring you know, the guys that they have on this team, I think this team is just another level. And I think they're going to be better than the 2018 roster that McVay took to the Super Bowl. So that's what I would say in that regard. And yeah, I don't think it's going to be close, but um, we'll get to final score pre- predictions at the end. But let's get into the offenses here. Um, we have to ask, and <laughs> we talked about this off air, Dave, uh, who has the better game, Stafford or Dalton? Why do you have to ask me that? Like, are you just trying to trying to clown me on this show right now? Of course, it's Matthew Stafford's going to have the better game. I mean, he also gets a huge advantage coming into this game, too, because he knows the Bears. Like, He's played against the Bears for his entire career. So, I mean, if you're looking at a brand new quarterback to take the reins for the franchise in Matthew Stafford, I mean, is there a better scenario than getting him set up week one at home? Uh, getting to play against a team that he is very, very familiar with. You know, he he's played against Khalil Mack and, and Akeem Hicks and Roquan Smith. He knows these guys. So, um, you know, it, it hurts me to say, but I'm, I'm not a delusional Bears fan. I think that um, Matthew Stafford's going to have the better game and the Rams are going to absolutely spank the Bears on Sunday. I second that. Um, <laughs> I agree with all of your points and you both, bring up a good one in the fact that Matthew Stafford has a lot of familiarity with the Bears, obviously uh, playing for so many years in the NFC North. So I think that Matthew Stafford's going to have a really good game. And like I've been saying, I think he's going to throw for uh, at least three touchdowns. Yeah, I have to agree with, I mean, both of you, I do think again, it's not going to be really close. And um, you know, it, it just goes back to, like I said, if they, they have a chance to back out and uh, start Justin Fields and make this game completely, you know, flip it on its head. And Sean McVay has come out and said that, you know, they're not letting up on, you know, their preparation for Fields. I mean, they're <clears throat> they're expecting to see him in some capacity. So, you know, we'll see. But with Stafford, yeah, I have him thrown for three touchdowns as well. Um, and he'll definitely have a better game. Moving on, the biggest X factor on each team. Uh, who do we got, Dave? Uh, you know, I think it's going to be Jimmy Graham. And I know that's a deep poll here. Everybody is so excited about Cole Komet, but uh, veterans like veterans. And I think if Andy Dalton's starting the whole game, I think that he is going to lean on that big body of Jimmy Graham. Uh, you know, the Bears, they offered, they're not offered, but they kept Jimmy Graham around this year when they had an out in his contract where they could have saved almost $8 million. So by keeping him around, I think it would be crazy for them not to utilize him. But I get it. You know, Cole Komet is young and he's flashy, and I think that he's going to be a great tight end at some point in his career. But I think Jimmy Graham is a guy that a lot of people are forgetting about right now. He's getting drafted like outside of the top 30 in fantasy football leagues. And we saw him as an absolute beast in the red zone last year. And it wouldn't shock me if uh, he sees a couple red zone looks this week. So, um, you know, there, there, there's some other guys too, Darnell Mooney and Khalil Herbert that have really impressed in camp, but I'm going to stick with what we saw last year, which is Jimmy Graham still having some left in the tank and being a very, very valuable red zone weapon. I'm going to say uh, for the bears, I actually think it's, it's funny because I was on a Bears podcast last night and I said that Cole Komet was going to be the biggest X factor um, for the Bears um, or Jimmy Graham, uh, but most likely Cole Komet, which they could interchange. But the reason why I think that the Bears tight end is going to get a lot of opportunities is because I think um, Allen Robinson and Darnell Mooney are going to be very tightly covered by our corners, which is going to leave uh, whoever the tight end is uh, for the Bears in a lot of um, – opportunistic positions because I think that, you know, like I've said before, and we might get into it later is the Rams linebacker core 
And secondary, aside from, you know, at times the, the corners I'm a little worried about, and I think the tight ends might uh, be able to be somewhat successful with that defensive uh, scheme. But when you look at the Rams, I'm going to go Cooper Cup. And it's not, it's not like glamorous. It's not like a uh, unique take at all if it, you've been watching Cooper Cup the past couple seasons. But I think that Matthew Stafford is going to hook up with him a lot. And, you know, I expect, like I said, Matthew Stafford, three-plus touchdowns. Won't surprise me if Cooper Cup gets more than one. Yeah, the, the way I see it uh, for the Bears, I think their biggest X factor, I mean, it's going to be Duke Shelley. I mean, what what can he do? You know, because the Rams use a ton of slot uh, yeah. receiver help. And Duke Shelley is going to have to step up and, and have a, you know, a big time game uh, to at least alleviate some of the pressure because obviously Stafford can make all the throws and any Bears fan that's listening to this knows that. Um, but, you know, if, if you can you know, neutralize the slot, whether it's Deshaun, whether it's Van Jefferson, whether it's Cup, whether it's Woods, then you might have a fighting chance. Now, they're, they're also starting Kendall Vildor, um, who I really like, a fifth-round pick from last season uh, on the outside, as well as Jalen Johnson. Um, I really th- feel like Duke Shelley, though, is the X factor because if they can neutralize the slot, they have a fighting chance um, because I do think you know the Rams really like using their slot receivers and you know creating those mismatches and you know of course with those legal picks and things like that that are in Sean McVay's arsenal uh, to get these guys wide open. Um, a lot of that is predicated on the slot. So I would say Duke Shelley, the nickel cornerback for the Bears. And then the X factor for the Rams, um, I'm going to say uh, straight up is uh, Terrell Burgess, uh, who is also going to either be playing uh, the slot position or you know he's going to be one of the three safeties out there uh, for their defense, potentially four if Nick Scott plays. And I look at Terrell Burgess. I mean, this is somebody that I would expect to have a good game. I mean, the last time he played against the Bears, he was having a great game. He started off great, was his first true action with the defense in a legit role, and then he gets hurt. He breaks his, breaks his ankle. Uh, it must be really weird for him to come back to where it all ended last season uh, against the same team, no less, on primetime. So I'm definitely curious to see that. I think those are the two biggest X factors, both nickel guys, um, and they're both going to be very valuable uh, for both teams. And they both really need to step up, uh, mainly Duke Shelley. But, you know, I want to see Burgess step up as well. Uh, with the Bears, um, will the Bears be able to protect Andy Dalton in this game? Because they did add Jason Peters. He is getting up there in age, of course, or he is already up there in <laughs> age. Um, <laughs> so there's that. Uh, and of course, you know, they have a guy by the name of Jermaine Effetti who is kind of rotated from guard and tackle. Um, they're starting Sam Mustafer, who's started a little bit last season. I believe he starts six or seven games, but, you know, he's not a guy. I've seen a lot of fans' comments and whatnot being on different shows, and he's not a guy that they have a ton of confidence in. Alexis probably has more. Um, and then, you know, looking at Cody Whitehair and, and James Daniels, it's a younger offensive line. Once you, you know, kind of don't think about Jason and Peters being at left tackle. So, uh, you know, Dave, will the Bears be able to protect Andy Dalton in this game? I, I really don't believe so. Um, and it, it's frustrating as a Bears fan to see this, but I think that they are taking steps in the right position. And we see a couple of veteran band-aids on this offensive line right now, like you talked about with Jason Peters and Jermaine Effetti. And that's kind of been the Bears MO as long as I've been a Bears fan. You know, they don't really want to spend that premium draft capital on any offensive lineman. They really like bringing in the flashy players that are going to sell jerseys. But, you know, they finally started putting a little bit of draft capital into this. And I think Cody Whitehair was the first one that they brought in who is, uh, you know, he was playing center and now he, he, he's out at left guard. But I think he's got a lot of talent. And and then they went out this year and they got Tevin Jenkins, who unfortunately, you know, had to have back surgery and, and his season is in question right now. But I think they're finally doing the right thing, trying to get a younger offensive line that they can build from and we've seen a lot of teams do this you know Dallas did it uh, uh, about eight or nine years ago and we've seen Pittsburgh do it and these teams that really just build in the trenches and they've done that on the defensive side of the ball but now they're starting to do that on the offensive side as well so I'm a fan of what they're doing but they aren't quite there yet I think that the two veterans that we talked about Jason Peters and Jermaine Fetty, are going to be the biggest weaknesses on this offensive line First of all, uh, Fetty, you know, he, he's just somebody that I haven't really been a fan of for years. 
And then Jason Peters, I mean, I, I think he's 40 years old. I don't think that's an exaggeration. I think he's actually 40 years old at this point. Um, and, and he's only had a few weeks with this team. So I don't know if he's going to be conditioned to be in shape or not. Um, that, that's one of the main reasons I want to see Fields because Fields, you know, he doesn't have the best pocket presence or pocket awareness, but he's at least got the mobility to get away from pressure. I'm afraid that, that, uh, you know, front seven for the Rams is just going to be teeing off on Dalton. It wouldn't surprise me if he sees four to five sacks. Yeah. I mean, I have to agree there. I think that this Bears offensive line is getting a real test as any offensive line does going up against Aaron Donald, let alone the first game of the season, let alone with a very new center in Sam Mustafer. So I think that's going to be, you know, probably a, a source of concern for Bears fans. But I just think in general that the Rams defensive front um, is very good. And I think that they're going to put this offensive line to the test. And I think that you know, if Andy Dalton wants to have any success, he's going to have to get the ball out quickly because I imagine that he's not going to have much time to throw. I agree. This needs to be the Randy Feekner uh, Steelers game plan last year. Uh, pretty much the whole year with Big Ben, just getting the ball out quickly, not having much of an offensive line uh, to boot. Although I will say having a run game could manipulate this because if they can't protect Andy Dalton, fine, but you start getting David Montgomery in the mix and we'll get into that in a bit, um, you know, could open up the, the play action passing attack, which, you know, is going to somewhat alleviate pressure. Uh, but yeah, you're dealing with Aaron Donald, Sean Robinson, um, you know, Sebastian Joseph Day. The Rams finally have two opening day starters at outside linebacker that they're confident in that they you know, worked with all off season. You had, uh, of course, Leonard Floyd, um, who you know very well, Dave. Uh, he had a pretty good year last year. And then uh, the big one here for me is Justin Hollins, uh, a guy that they basically picked up off the street as a waiver claim at the end of the cutdown period last season. He carved out a role, and now he here he is. He's starting week one. Uh, so it's definitely going to be interesting with that. And Dalton is going to get pressured. Um, I don't think that the Bears will be able to protect him. Jason Peters probably has the best chance of doing that. Um, and it's crazy because I know how old he is, but I think he's still somebody that can play in this league at, at a decently high level. Um, although it shouldn't be crazy because the Rams have Whitworth and they're about the same age. So yeah, I don't think it's that crazy, but uh, I don't think the Bears will be able to protect Dalton at all. I actually had the Rams getting uh, six sacks in this game, but obviously we're, we're not going to get too much into the stat predictions yet. Um, how many carries do you see David Montgomery getting in this one, Dave? Uh, I think that he's probably going to see between 13 and 15 touches, and that's simply because they're going to fall behind quickly. So, or I'm sorry, 13 to 15 carries because they're going to fall behind quickly. So everybody wants to know one of the big questions this year is, uh, is David Montgomery going to hold on to the passing down work that made him such a great value last year? And I think we're going to find out right away. Um, obviously, Tariq Cohen is still injured, so he's not going to be around. But there's a lot of speculation that Damian Williams could be cutting into that passing down work. And with them likely to fall behind early, uh, you know, Matt Nagy is not somebody that can stick to the run. When that team starts trailing, they're going to immediately go to the passing game. And we'll see if David Montgomery stays on the field or not. But because of just the way that I expect this game to go, I think the run game is going to get scripted out very quickly. And I think 15 carries is pretty much the max that you can expect from David Montgomery. But uh, I think that he's still going to hold on to that passing down work. I think that he's going to hold on to that passing down work even when Tariq Cohen comes back. So I'd say that even though he's only going to have what I expect to be 13 to 15 touches, it wouldn't surprise me if he sees six to eight targets on top of that. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think 13 to 15 is a good number, maybe slightly higher. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm curious to see. I think that he's going to be used as a receiver as well um, against the Rams. Uh, you know, like Dave said, if, if they fall behind, I could easily see that happening. Uh, but yeah, I like David Montgomery, actually. He's someone I think I'm higher on than most that I talk to, but uh, we'll see. But I, I don't expect the, the Bears uh, utilizing the run game too much especially in the second half against the Rams. Yeah, I mean, it, Dave really hit it on the head there. If they get down early, they're not going to be able to run the football. And furthermore, they're not going to do it with Matt Nagy. That's just not his MO. So um, I think, yeah, it's. It, I didn't even think of that initially. So that's a great point. David Montgomery will be phased out of the running game early on, I think. And then you're probably looking at, you know, five to eight targets, I would say. You could see some Damian Williams. You could also see... 
uh, rookie uh, running back, Lil Herbert as well. He had a really good preseason. Um, so we'll see in that regard. But yeah, I, I expect that as well is, is that, you know, they're kind of going to shut down that that run attack and it's going to turn into more of, hey, you're going to have to help us out of the backfield. And they're going to have a running back there for Andy Dalton to dump it off because I don't see any other way. You're going to have to have that that security blanket safety net. Uh, to help him out in this one. Um, anyway, do you have any sort of feeling, Dave, that Justin Fields could make a surprise start on Sunday Night Football? Or do you think Sean McVay is just, uh, you know, out of his mind for preparing for him? Life is back on sports bettors, and BetUS has your NBA, NHL, UFC, PGA, and yes, NFL betting lines up on their 27th year and live betting on all of it. Log into BetUS, that is betus.com or call 800-792-3887 that's 800-79-BETUS bet us for 125 percent bonuses with promo code rams125 customer service pros are ready to get your phone social and online sports betting kickoff started now play with the proven mainstay in the industry bet us you bet you win, you get paid. BetUS.com. Ready for an out-of-world experience, fellas? Look no further than the Performance Package 4.0 for Manscaped. That has just taken off in not only the USA, but Canada, the UK, across Europe, Australia, South Africa, and Singapore. Inside this package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold your whole solar system in. First scheduled for liftoff, new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, this spaceship is here to guide you on a journey to trim your body, balls, butt, and even your anus. This fourth generation trimmer also features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. Thanks to our advanced skin safe technology, the Lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor and a new multifunction on and off switch that can engage a travel lock and is even waterproof. The Lawnmower 4.0 also has a 4,000K LED spotlight you can turn on and off when needed for a more precise shave throughout your travels across the universe. The Performance 4.0 also includes the Weed Whacker. It's like having a little astronaut to chop your worst weeds up the top of your nose and your ears. The Weed Whacker is also waterproof and uses a 9,000 RPM motor-powered 360-degree rotary dual-blade system. This nose and ear hair trimmer provides proprietary skin-safe technology, which helps prevent nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate holes. Don't forget about the Crop Preserver, Ball Deodorant, and the Crop Reviver to help your little planets be on their A-game while feeling the sun's heat. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Abort Harry Balls! Buzz Lightyear, that Woody with Manscaped. Well, it's not just Sean McVay. Uh, Chicago Beat Reporter just came out and said that recently. And uh, Matt Nagy said that there is a scenario where he does make an appearance on Sunday. So I don't really know what to expect. Um, do I think that he's going to get pulled, you know, uh, or, or that Dalton is going to get pulled at halftime and, and Justin Fields is going to play the second half? I, I don't expect that to happen. But it wouldn't surprise me if they run a couple packages where Justin Fields does get to take some snaps, uh, you know, just to get him, you know, a little acclimated to NFL speed in game. Um, and, and we've seen that before where, you know, guys go in for a few snaps here and there. You might steal that from uh, Kyle Shanahan's playbook with what they're doing with Garoppolo and Trey Lance right now. I don't think that there's any chance where he takes over and is the lead quarterback for any point in the game. But, you know, we, we might see him for, for a handful of snaps. I, I think that anybody that's expecting Dalton to get benched, though, I, I don't see any scenario where that happens. I do not see any scenario where Justin Fields plays against the Rams, uh, fortunately, uh, because I do think he's the better option compared to Andy Dalton. But yeah, I don't, I don't think that that there's again, you know, any way. I don't think that he's going to get benched. I think the only way that he comes in. Uh, would be because of injury. But, uh, you know, I I don't see any situation where they willingly take Andy Dalton out of the game. Yeah, I'm 
I got to say, if they use Justin Fields and sub packages, then they completely defeat the whole purpose of not playing him against the Rams, in my opinion. You're just putting him in harm's way at that point. You might as well just play him to start. Um, so I don't see any point of actually using him in this game if they're not going to just start him at quarterback. And I feel like Matt Nagy is somewhat <clears throat> he is somewhat stubborn, so I don't see him. Gonna, I don't think he's going to start Fields, but I, I'm going to keep saying it. You know, the unbiased fan of football in me and obviously fan of Justin Fields is just absolutely dumbfounded how you don't play him uh, week one. And I think it sets a bad precedent, too, if the reason is, say you play him week two, and the reason you'll play him week one is because it's the Rams and you don't want him to go up against that type of defense. I think it sets a bad precedent because you're basically saying that while we trust you and we drafted you, you know, in the you know 11th overall or what have you in the draft, uh, to, you know, to be our franchise quarterback, we don't believe that you can play against the league's best yet. Like, I don't know if I agree with that. So I'm and, really, and the I, also, fan. I just, I'll, I'll, I'll piggyback real quickly. Cause that, that's what I hear is that people say that they don't want him going against the Rams, but I don't know if that's really the reason that he's not playing this week. Um, yeah. I think Matt Nagy, I, I think part of it has to do with what I alluded to earlier that he made some sort of off season commitment to Andy Dalton. But another part of it is you got to realize that when he was in Kansas city, he watched Andy Reed bench Patrick Mahomes for almost a full year behind Alex Smith. And I think that he's just trying to follow that template. And I, I don't think it really has as much to do with the um, defense of the Rams as it does him just trying to take the old school bench your rookie for a year, let him develop approach. I hope to God that's not the case, Dave. <laughs> I hope to God that's not. And for your sake as well, because I think I think we can all agree Sundays would be a lot more fun for Bears fans if uh, Justin Fields was trotting out of the tunnel as a starter. But um, is there a certain matchup um, you could see the Rams or Bears uh, offensive player exploiting this week? Rams or Bears, you don't have to pick one for each, just uh, either one. You know, I think Deshaun, or I'm sorry, Deshaun Jackson is in for a big game. And that's, you know, it's kind of funny. We see this week one all the time and then he gets injured. And, and I don't expect that to happen. You know, I think injuries are kind of fluky. But um, I, I think that them bringing in Matthew Stafford, uh, it, it just adds such a different level to this Rams offense. I feel like Jared Goff really handicapped what they were able to do on offense. They had to kind of tailor to him with a lot of checkdowns to running backs and uh, you know, screens and, and slants to Woods and Cup. But I think with Matt Stafford having such an accurate deep ball, that adds a new dimension to this game. And then on top of that, them just having the ability to push the ball down the field now with Matthew Stafford, the safeties that the Bears have are very aggressive safeties. You know, you see Eddie Jackson and uh, and, and Deshaun, Deshaun Gibson uh, playing up a lot. So if there's anybody that can blow the top off of this defense, it is Deshaun Jackson. And then you've got this new quarterback that can actually hit him down the field. So I think that is a very exploitable area right there where it wouldn't surprise me if we see Deshaun Jackson have one of his patented 70, 80 yard touchdowns. Yeah. My answer is probably too, too like simple, but I'm just going to say Matthew Stafford. (laughs) I think Matthew Stafford is going to absolutely carve up the Bears secondary. Uh, Again, he's familiar with the Bears secondary. He's played against them a lot. I think he's going to do a good job of finding his receivers and making accurate passes and, you know, finding those weaknesses and holes in the Bears defense. So, uh, yeah, I just expect a really big game from Stafford. So Dave took mine. I was going to say Deshaun Jackson as well. I I think – I would not be surprised at the first play of the game, Stafford throws an 80 yard touchdown to Sean Jackson to start off the season. I would not at all. Like a big flashbacks. <laughs> yeah, I would not at all be surprised if they, because I mean, come on, McVay, you kind of alluded to it, Dave, that like they were really hamstrung with Jared Goff. And McVay has been criticized all off season for making this trade and the lack of loyalty. I bet this guy cannot wait to go out there and just unleash Matthew Stafford this season. So, I, I could have, you know, definitely expect that. I'm not going to say Stafford because Alex said that. So I'm going to say um, somebody that could exploit, you know, the Bears or well, either side. But I'm going to say the the Ram here that I'm going to go with um, is whoever is going up against Jalen Johnson, because I don't think Jalen Johnson's a bad player. I actually think he's a very good player. But from what I've experienced watching Jalen Johnson, he's very physical. And I feel like Cup can put him on skates if he over pursues and he tries to, you know, play with that physicality. I feel like Kendall Vildor is going to be playing more off 
I feel like he's going to be playing more conservative. You know, obviously he's excited to be the starter and everything. Um, but the way I see it is that Jalen Johnson has that experience was a second round pick. He's going to get comfortable. You know, he already is comfortable. You know, he gets his hands on you. I just don't feel like that's how, you know, you want to, so, so to speak, that's how you want to defend, uh, you know, a Cooper cup or Robert Woods, somebody like that, that can put you on skates, so to speak. So that is the, uh, offensive player that will be exploiting, uh, the bears. It's multiple. <laughs> it's not one but it's whoever uh jalen johnson's covering which i believe will be cooper cup but we will see um and now on the defensive side is there a certain matchup rams or bears defensive player is going to exploit this week i mean i think khalil Mack had a down year last year and from everything that i've been reading you know he didn't take a, any of the veteran days he wasn't resting in camp he was out there setting the tone for the defense and this is a team that back in 2019 was able to generate a lot of turnovers, a lot of big impact plays on defense, and then it kind of cooled down a little bit in 2020. And I think that was just strictly from, you know, a little bit of luck, but also a little bit of lack of effort. And I think that uh, Khalil Mack is just going to come in with a huge chip on his shoulder, knowing that this is probably the defense's last chance at making a run. I mean, they've got a lot of talented guys here, but they're all getting up there in age. When you look at Akeem Hicks, Khalil Mack, um, you know, uh, Danny Trevathan, even, even Eddie Jackson, he's not – old, but you know, he's got some injuries. I don't know how much longer he'll be able to keep playing at a high level. So I, I think that this defense just comes out angry. And I think that Khalil Mack is going to be the main guy there. Um, I, I think that Stafford has taken quite a few sacks from Mack in his career. So he's going to be playing a little bit scared. And I think that, um, you know, e even though I expect the Rams to win, you know, easily here, I, I do think that Khalil Mack has himself a very big game, similar to how he did in 2018, week one against Aaron Rodgers, where he had a few sacks, he had a, a strip sack that he took back for a touchdown. I think that he just comes out ready to play, and this year with a clean bill, bill of health, I expect him to be dominant. I'm going to say I think, I think Jalen Ramsey is going to have a pretty big game, and I think that, that – Jalen Ramsey is going to uh, capitalize on the fact that Andy Dalton will be trying to get the ball out rather quickly and might not be making the best of passes uh, due to the defensive front putting a lot of pressure on Andy Dalton. So I think that Jalen Ramsey is going to have a big game potentially. Um, maybe even Darius Williams I could see having an interception uh, you know, some of our safeties, but I think that our Ram secondary is going to have the opportunity to capitalize on some potential wild throws. You know, I'll add to that with the Jalen Ramsey. This is a guy that we know is very plugged into social media and he cares what people think about him. And I might be big brain in this a little bit, but there was that video of Darnell Mooney putting him on skates last year that got a lot of traction in the off season. So it wouldn't surprise me if Jalen Ramsey plays with a similar chip on his shoulder, just because of that viral video that's been going around all off season of Darnell Mooney getting open on him. Yeah. And it's, it's worth mentioning Dave, because you said about cool Mac, Jalen Ramsey is somebody that doesn't take a day off. And we had Bryce Perkins right after the preseason. And he said, you know, he's the one guy every single day he's playing, you know, 100% in practice. So, yeah, I mean, he, you know, I could definitely see him having a big one. I'm going to go. Um, I mean, I don't want to go with the obvious, right? Aaron Donald's going to exploit that interior. So I'm going to go with Leonard Floyd exploiting Jermaine Effetti, who Dave doesn't really like that much. I sure as hell didn't like him when <laughs> Seattle got him. I was like clapping. I was like, all right picked him good good job there um you know if Eddie to me is a guard that they're trying to fit at right tackle and I think the reason for this if I'm not mistaken they had an injury um to Tevin Jenkins I believe right he's he's no longer I, I don't know if he's even going to play this year Dave is, is that true uh, I mean, that's what it sounds like. Back surgery isn't usually oh, something you bounce back from quickly. So I, I, I wouldn't be shocked if we don't see Tevin Jenkins for the entire season. Yeah, that's I mean, that's a huge blow. So I think Leonard Floyd, you already have. I mean, he had two sacks against the uh, the, the Bears last year um, playing against his former team. You know, you could argue from his perspective, the team that didn't give him a contract didn't think he was worth it. And he's going up against Jermaine Effetti. There's blood in the water. And I'm not even just talking about Aaron Donald. 
I think you're spot on with that. I think they made such a huge mistake letting Leonard Floyd walk. Uh, he had a phenomenal season last year, and it wouldn't surprise me if, uh, you know, that, that's what we have right now this time of year because there's so many changes on defenses and offenses that we don't really know exactly how to expect the personnel. So a lot of the stuff that we talk about right now is narrative driven, and that's a narrative right there that's pretty tough to ignore, that he deserved to get paid. The Bears let him walk, and yeah, I, I think that he's going to be playing with a little bit of extra heat on Sunday night. Yeah, and then, uh, so with the defense, continuing on with these questions, we have, uh, do you see any of these teams generating turnovers? Um, we'll start with you, Dave. Yeah, I, I think both of these teams are going to have quite a few turnovers. And, you know, this is a game where we do have a lot of big names in there for fantasy, you know, with Cooper Cup and Robert Woods and Allen Robinson and David Montgomery. And, and I get that there are good offensive players here, but these defensive battles are some of my favorite games. And, you know, let, let's face it, Matthew Stafford is a good quarterback, but he is a little bit turno turnover prone. We know that about Andy Dalton as well. And I think the biggest playmakers aren't going to show up anywhere in fantasy, but they're going to show up on the defensive side of the ball. So, I mean, between both teams, I think that three turnovers is, you know, almost expected because you just have some some dogs on uh, both defensive ends. So I, I think, you know, two or three turnovers is kind of what you should expect for this game at a minimum. Yeah, I agree with Dave. Um, I mentioned, you know, earlier, obviously, Jalen Ramsey and Darius Williams, but I could also see the Bears uh, forcing a few turnovers as well, just knowing the way that their defense plays and our defense plays. So I do think it's going to be, uh, you know, a, an interesting thing to watch for from both defenses. Uh, and uh, I'd really like to see Jalen Ramsey get a pick in the in the season opener, but we'll see. I think most of Rams Twitter wants to see Jalen Ramsey dunk on uh, Darnell Mooney. It really does not affect me that much because I think Mooney is a uh, a very talented young player. He didn't personally go out like constantly making that highlight and throwing it on Twitter. So I don't, you know, don't hate the player. Like, I guess hate the hype. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, I could definitely see Ramsey coming down with the interception. I could definitely see Burgess. I think Burgess is going to take one. Uh, to the house. Um, I really am expecting a big game out of him. I'm expecting a strip sack from Aaron Donald and, you know, maybe a, a forced fumble, you know, Brian Allen gets beat off the snap by Eddie Goldman. If he plays or, uh, you know, maybe Akeem Hicks. I think that's definitely possible with, of course, you know, cool Mac having an option. I don't think Stafford's going to throw a pick uh, because I think a lot of his interceptions were done because they were down in games and he was trying to make things happen and forcing things. I think he's going to be, you know, very even keel with the Rams, kind of like he always was, but without worrying about the stress level of, you know, having to come back from 10, 17, 24, whatever. So I actually think he'll take good care of the football this year. Um, I only haven't thrown nine interceptions all season, so. I don't think he throws one in this game. Um, and then the the last one on the defense is before we get to the stat predictions and final score, uh, Rams secondary versus Bears secondary. Uh, who are you taking? Uh, me, personally, I am going with the Rams secondary. I mean, the, the Bears, they, they've really got one guy here that impresses me, and that's Eddie Jackson. Uh, you called out the, the with Jalen Johnson. I think that he showed some flashes as a rookie, but he is much better suited as a team's second quarterback. Losing Kyle Fuller is just so tough to get over. And now the Bears are kind of in this position where they're going for the quantity over quality approach when it comes to their cornerbacks. And they've really just got a bunch of nobodies over there. I mean, it's tough to get it. I, I know uh, Kendall Vildor is, is one of your guys, but you know, he, he's not somebody that I'm that excited about and they'll be rotating in Artie Burns and, and Duke Shelley might have some moments here and there, but you know, I, really when you look at these teams on paper, the secondary for the Rams is just tears ahead of where the bears are right now. That's definitely their biggest weakness on defense. Yeah. I got to go with the Rams as well. Um, you know, like I've been saying, uh, you know, kind of, about Jalen Ramsey and Darius Williams, and you mentioned Terrell Burgess. Uh, you mentioned, well, you know, Jordan Fuller, uh, you know, even Taylor Rapp, just, just guys that I think are, you know, based on what we're hearing, playing really well and I think are going to have big games on Sunday night. So I got to go with the Rams. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Rams here as well. Um, I'm a big, big Eddie Jackson fan, and that has nothing to do with the fact that I like Bama, but I honestly just really enjoyed watching him in Fangio's scheme. 
you and I had this conversation on the live stream, Dave. I'm a big fan of Eddie Jackson, so I understand why you'd mention him. Um, but you know, Tayshawn Gibson's like I, I I think he's solid, but I don't think he's anything that you know totally moves the needle. Um, Kendall Vildor is more of you know he's my guy. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna trash the guy, but I also don't think he. I was a little surprised he was starting. We'll say that. Um, Jalen Johnson, like you said, I think really would have. Um, I, I think he really would have been in a great position being that number two corner. And like you said, letting go of Kyle Fuller, it really puts a lot of pressure on a young corner that likes to play way too aggressive to be that number one guy. Uh, we've seen that in the past. The Rams had the number one guy when Marcus Peters was that you take chances, you try to get physical and all of that. And uh, it, it can really leave you wide open to get gashed. And then, you know, Duke Shelley is another guy that, you know, the hope is the sixth round pick from 2019, uh, you know, can make something happen as, you know, their nickel. But I, I'm not overly excited about him. He's somebody that I'm watching. He's an X factor, but I'm not overly excited about him. Artie Burns does not excite me at all. Whereas I look at the Rams and you have Jalen Ramsey and Darius Williams, who's one of the best cornerback tandems in the league. You know, like Alexis said, you know, you have Burgess, you have Fuller, you have Rapp. Didn't mention Nick Scott or J.R. Reed or even Juju Hughes. They are loaded at safety. Even without John Johnson, I think they have a better safety group this year than they did last year, to be honest with you. And their corners, I mean, I'm not the biggest David Long fan, but he's technically your fourth corner if, you know, Terrell Burgess is going to play slot. Um, and then you have Robert Rochelle. So, yeah, I would definitely go with the Rams secondary as well. Uh, but we move on here. Is there any stat predictions, Dave, that you want to throw your name on? Uh, in this uh, this podcast, you know, I know I heard you know a little subtle hate on Allen Robinson throughout this, and I think that it's just you know this guy is uh, doesn't matter who his quarterback is, doesn't matter who's guarding him, this guy finds a way to get it done. And I checked out rankings today, and you know he was getting drafted as kind of a low end wide receiver one, high end wide receiver two, but I think that he is going to outperform. Um, where he's being ranked this week. So many people are quick to fade him because of Jalen Johnson. But I, I, I think that, you know, I will I am very confident that Allen Robinson will get at least 100 yards this week. And I think a big part of that is Andy Dalton. And we saw Andy Dalton just force feeding targets to AJ Green, you know, about 150 a year, which is similar to the pace that uh, Allen Robinson has been able to command during his time in Chicago. So I think that the veteran is going to lean heavily on Allen Robinson. And that's kind of the indications that we got throughout camp as well. So I think that Allen Robinson for a hundred yards is a flag that I'm willing to plant for this week. So I already said Matthew Stafford, three plus touchdowns, but I'm going to go, I don't know how bold this is, but I'm going to say Leonard Floyd, two sacks against his former team. Um, Leonard Floyd gets a lot of opportunity, you know, with Aaron, playing alongside Aaron Donald. So I can see him having that same opportunity, like always Sunday night. And I think he's going to get two sacks, uh, against his former team. And I'm sure he'll be really happy about it. I have a, a bunch of predictions here. Stafford throwing for 320 plus and three touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, Daryl Henderson going for over 100 total yards. We didn't really talk about him much, um, mainly because it's just we're talking about the the exploited, you know, secondary and um, just everything going on, you know, just not having, uh, you know, Justin Fields obviously kind of changes things. Instead, you have Andy Dolan. Um, and then because of that, I have Aaron Dom, Leonard Floyd, and Justin Hollins combining for six sacks in this game. And they could have more, um, but I'm going to say those three combined for six. Terrell Burgess brings in an interception and to kind of wrap this one up uh, for final score predictions. I have the Rams winning 38 to 10, um, but Dave, what are your, uh, your final score predictions on this one? Wow. I was expecting a beat down, but that is, that is a, <laughs> that's a huge beat down right there. I think it's going to be a little bit tighter than that. Um, I've got the Bears scoring 17 and the Rams scoring 28. So in my, I wrote an article uh, before the season, uh, before the preseason, excuse me, where I uh, predicted the entire NFL season and the rankings and stats and everything like that. And I had the Rams winning this game 35 to seven. Uh, 
But as I said on the Irish Bear show last night, I'm kind of leaning more towards like 35 to 14, 35 to 17. I do think that the Bears might find a couple of ways uh, to get some points on the board. But uh, regardless, I think the Rams are going to win pretty easily. Yeah, um, I think, you know, 38 to 10 is obviously it's a it's a steep thing. Um, I don't think the Bears are as bad as that score would indicate. I do think the Rams are that good. And I do think the Bears, like, again, playing Andy Dalton and not having that mobility that you would have in Justin Fields, I think really just opens up a whole can of worms for this defense to just tee off on him. And uh, I'm going to say this. I I hope he doesn't get hurt because I never wish injuries on anybody, but I wouldn't be surprised as we've seen Alexis, you and I Rams defenses like eliminate quarterbacks like crazy it's it's been happening for years and it's not anything like bounty gate or anything but it, it could be an ankle or something but i wouldn't be surprised if andy dalton gets hurt a lot like if, if he gets hit a lot i wouldn't be surprised if he leaves the game due to injury because of how <clears throat> just they're gonna be they're gonna have to protect him bottom line uh, it's gonna be bad i mean these guys keep in mind aaron donald's last uh experience on a football field um, as far as in a game setting, he was uh, on the sidelines crying because he couldn't go out there and play for his team and having to watch his team lose and knowing if he was 100%, they probably could have won that game and gone in the FC title game. Make no mistake about it. He and everybody that was on that team last year, they're out for revenge. They're out for blood. And that's why I really think the Rams and that defense that's being questioned because they lost their defensive coordinator in Brandon Staley are just going to kick it up a notch to maybe a level we haven't seen. Retweet. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, anything, uh, anything you want to add, Dave, anything you want to plug before uh, we, we head out of here? No, I tell everyone at this point, just follow me on Twitter with all the articles I'm writing and shows that I'm guesting on and shows that I'm hosting everything I'm doing. It, it's just easiest to follow me on Twitter. See what I got going on there. You can find me at Dave Kluge. That's Dave K L U G E. All right. Well, thank you so much uh, for coming on the show. We really enjoyed talking to you. I know that you're as excited as we are for Sunday Night Football, a few days away. Uh, feels like we've been waiting an eternity, but it's almost here. Uh, guys, as always, if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at the Alexis Craft. You can follow Jake at JK Bogan. Um, and until next time, guys, stay safe and go Rams. Bet with the three-decade leader, BetUS. Join now for 125% bonus or 200% bonus with crypto using promo code RAMS125. And bet sports, casino, horses, pop culture, and more at BETUS.com. You bet, you win, you get paid. BetUS. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code DTR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and make sure to use code DTR. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped.